So what is a piston ring key? It's a round piece of metal, typically metal, depends on what you're working with. Could be a polymer, right. could be gauze, could be felt, but in an internal combustion engine, it's going to be made out of metal. Iron, steels, and its job is to seal that piston. Its job is to keep the combustion pressure out of the crankcase and to control oil, and very importantly, move out the heat. Yeah, guys, transfer the heat out of the piston. Well, we can make more power then we can get rid of the heat. And that's an important part of designing and outlying an engine is that factor. How much heat can I get rid of? Because I can actually make more power than I can get rid of. It's the ring's job to move that heat. So that's a very important function. So piston rings have three jobs and it just turns out to me that there's actually three rings in a typical piston ring set. Can we talk about piston rings? Well, it's not a ring. There's actually three and they each have a very specific okay. job in controlling the oil, transferring the heat, and sealing the combustion. Absolutely, and as like just said, typically it's three. Sometimes there's two, sometimes there's five, six, eight. I worked on an old engine with a gentleman yesterday, six rings on that piston. Did it need six rings? It certainly didn't, <laughs> especially with today's technology, but back in the 1930s, it was a six ringer. More was better back then. Absolutely, well, that's all we could do. We couldn't control combustion well, we couldn't control oil well, so you just keep stacking them on. All right, so, it's gonna go through all three rings and what the function of each ring is. So we gotta start at the top, bad pun, I'm sorry, I can't help it. So the top ring, its main job is? We're gonna control combustion pressure. When that spark plug ignites the mixture and it's making power, that's actually what causes it to seal. Absolutely, the ring's gas activated. As much as we'd like to think that, you know, the built-in tension that the ring makes does the job, well, it's part of the equation, but ultimately it's all about gas pressure. It's about gas loading or gas activating that ring. And that's why it's so critical to get those gas pressures behind that ring. We get into a big turbocharged piece, big pulling tractor, big drag race, you know, big road race, what, big whatever it is. Yeah. We've got to get that cylinder pressure behind the ring because that ring gas activates. And that's where gas porting, the piston ring comes into play to get that additional gas pressure out there and help load that ring. Because it's the seal, that top ring's job number one is to seal. So we want that gas pressure staying in the combustion chamber to move the piston to do the work to make the power. You don't want it blowing by the ring. So we design the ring so that gas pressure gets behind the ring and pushes it out against the cylinder wall so it seals. Of course, why it's touching the cylinder wall is also doing something else. It's scraping oil, it's controlling blow by. Also moving heat. Oh, you see, here I am preaching about heat, <laughs> you know, brain dead moment. It's moving heat. The bulk of the heat is occurring in the combustion chamber. Well, we've got some going out the exhaust side, of course, some through the combustion chamber, but the bulk of the heat's going into the ring, ring to the piston, piston to the wall, water to the water, wall to the water if it's got it. We've got to get rid of that heat. That is the one of the most important jobs that that ring has is to help transfer that heat out of that piston. So the top ring is going to do two things. It's going to seal the combustion gases so it doesn't blow by into the crankcase so it makes power and it's going to transfer the heat out of the piston into the cylinder block out to the water and its way out. So it's going to seal it's gonna transfer heat, but there's a lot of different options when it comes to the type of top ring, right? Because this right here is a normal rectangular ring that's a conventional gap ring, but they don't aren't always this. They can be slightly different. Oh, absolutely. There's different materials, cast irons, ductile irons, different grades of steel. All of these are about temperature. It's all about how much heat it's gotta handle. I like to say the heat puts the tension in, the heat takes the tension out. So we've gotta make sure we're using a base material that's strong enough and tough enough for what you're doing. But then we've got the profile or the shape. As Lake said, we've got rectangular piston rings, but there's also what are common and used in diesel applications, keystone rings where the ring's kind of a wedge or a taper. We've got half keystones that have a combination of features, flat on the bottom, tapered on the top. And then there are other shapes out there as well, but those are the three most common, rectangular being the most common. And from where I stand, probably the most popular. I Absolutely. think that works very well. It doesn't, you don't affect it by piston to wall. It simply stays where it needs to be. The only thing it adjusts is the back clearance. So rectangular is generally the shape to go with. So those are the basics of the top ring. Now we gotta talk about the second ring. So when you get to the second ring, 
you would think, because it looks a whole lot like that top ring, that its job would be the same, but it really isn't. It's a dual purpose piece. Yo, know, every OE out there has tried a two ring piston engine in the production world. And every one of them that I've ever seen has gone back to a three ringer because that two ringer just didn't do the overall job. So the second ring- And what job did it fail to do really well? Most importantly, oil control. Absolutely. So that's the misnomer. Even though that second ring looks a lot like that top ring, like he said, it has two jobs as well. Its first job is actually oil control, not compression sealing. Yeah. This is what I'm gonna call your backup buddy. It's backing up the top ring and it's backing up the second ring. What little blow by pressure gets by the top ring, that second ring is gonna try to catch it. It's gonna try to stop it from getting down in the crankcase. But that oil control, let's call the oil control ring what I'll call the rough part of the package. This is gonna remove the bulk of the oil. The fine oil control is the second ring. What that oil ring missed, this ring's going to catch. So it's, like I say, it's your backup. It's backing up that top ring, it's backing up that oil ring. So the three ring piston is so effective because we've got that top ring to do its job, that second ring covering both of them, and then the oil ring. So what about materials and designs on the second ring compared to the top ring? Because they are different. They absolutely are different. Second rings are typically going to have an angled or a tapered face so that we can additionally get a little higher point pressure at the bottom contact edge, scraping that oil down. As well, on the upstroke, the ring's gonna rotate in the ring land and kind of parallel the bore and reduce friction. But we also have the Napier, which is kind of a combination. You know, ring designs have come and gone for a hundred years. You know, the Napier ring's not anything new. This goes way back into the early days. But we now have kind of a combination where we're taking that taper and then adding that Napier hook to the bottom so we get additional oil scraping and the friction reduction of the tapered face. So there you go. The second ring is actually working in concert with both the top ring and the oil ring. And that Napier hook is basically scraping oil like you said, it's actually functioning primarily as a oil scraping ring with some compression sealing, but we talked all about oil scraping. This bad boy right here, this is the main beast. That's your daddy right there. That's your Magilla. <laughs> so the three ring setup in a ring set also happens to contain typically a three piece oil ring. Now there are some two piece oil ring designs, but predominantly what you're going to find is a three piece design that is two scraper rails and expander. Explain what the expander is to him, Keith. Well, the expander, and it will just say, if history is correct, and what I've been told all these years is correct, that was developed by a gentleman by the name of Parker Irway on the flex vent style expander. There oh, are different nice. designs on the three-piece oil ring, but that one has been attributed to Parker Irway. So the thing to think about an expander, and we get these calls all the time, people are checking gaps on expanders or putting them on a board and looking at them, that's not a ring. It's a spring. Yeah. So it's a spring, not a ring. It's a spring, not a ring. So you really can't tell what it's going to generate by just putting it into the bore. It's a combination of the three pieces to generate that tension. So it can be a little misleading when you look at the end gaps that the part produces. We have to look at the overall tension or force. So think about it like a valve spring. When I put that valve spring together, I put it all together. Okay. I've got my installed height. It makes, let's just throw a number out, 200 pounds on the seat. But if I change that installed height, make it a little taller, I've got less on the seat. I make it a little shorter, I've got more on the seat. Same thing with an oil ring expander because it's a spring, not a ring. And as Lake mentioned, this is the typical three-piece design that's used today, but there are also old one-piece cast iron rings, and there are two-piece designs which look like a one-piece with a little backing spring, and those are still out there. They're typically older applications that use those, but they're still out there, they still work, but in my opinion, none of them are as effective as the three-piece. What's nice about this flex vent style three-piece ring is that it's very easy for that oil that's being scraped to drain back, because that's the whole point of scraping is you don't want excess oil in the cylinder when you scrape it off, it has to go somewhere. So a ring like this that has that big vent in it, flex vent. vent, allows that oil that's been scraped to get back through the piston into the sump. Absolutely, it's what's known as a through drain design. As Lake just said, the whole idea is to get it back into the sump, not in the combustion chamber. And one thing too, you may be able to see on the top of these rails, or the face of these rails, is a chrome coating. So these oil rails typically come one of two ways, either coated or uncoated. 
Absolutely. Depending on what the cylinder material is, whether we're dealing with an iron cylinder or possibly a nicosil coated cylinder, there's also Alucil coated cylinders. Well, let me take that back. Alucil is not a coating. It's what it's made from. Right. And then we've got arc plasma moly style bore coating, sumi bore. Mm -hmm. So we offer different coatings on the rail depending on what it is you're doing. I'll always go back to the, the old adage, and I know this is probably getting old. Make me your first call, not your last. What are you working on? What do you want it to do? What's the end goal? So we can make sure that you get the right package. Why well, it seems pretty simplistic that there's a top ring, a second ring, and an oil ring, and they work together to do the job of combustion sealing, heat transfer, and oil control. Okay, that's the basics. But there's a lot of complexity that goes on beyond that. Don't worry, we're not gonna go through all those details right now in this video because it would be really too much. Yeah. If you had a spider plot matrix of this thing, it would look like Charlotte's Web. You Absolutely. Know, it would be quite crazy what's going on. So the important thing to remember is that when you're talking about piston rings, more times than not for a four cycle engine, you're talking about a three ring design. Top ring, second ring, oil ring, all doing that job of compression sealing, oil control, and heat transfer. And there's a lot of variables in terms of sizings, designs, materials, and coatings to cover all the varieties of engine designs and fuels and all the other variables that come our way. It's almost an infinite combination that's available these days. It really is, which is why he said it's better to make him your first call, not the last call. So we will actually have another video coming up pretty soon where we go into the details of how to make that decision about which piston ring design to buy, because now that you understand the basics of piston rings, the next thing is which one is the right one for you. So stay tuned for that video. It'll be up next.